to wrap up our understanding of Native Americans in North America and South America, we need to understand how the contact with Europeans affected Native Americans. And as we go through this, I want you to keep in mind that European contact totally changed everything, every aspect of Native American life. So uh, we'll start with uh, Christopher Columbus. And at the time, Christopher Columbus discovered the New World. There were several civilizations in the Americas. North America was inhabited by hundreds of tribes of Native Americans. So we have the Maya, the Inca, the Aztec that you already learned about. Then all of the Native American tribes in North America. There really weren't the, the, the complicated or complex civilizations in North America that there were in South America, but there were still millions and millions of Native Americans living in both North and South America. And a majority of them lived in tribes in North America. So a tribe is a community of people that share common customs, traditions, and language. And it's just different from a civilization because tribes are typically smaller in number and they are more mobile. So a tribe may range from one area to another, where a civilization is quite static as far as they build their buildings out of stone. They're built to survive, to last for a long time, where tribes do not. Uh, so let's take a look at the Spanish and the conquest of the Aztec and the Inca. The Spanish came to America, arrived in the Americas in 1492 when, when Columbus discovered the New World. And we put discovered in quotation marks because he really didn't discover North America or South America. It was, it was here already and people knew that it was here. And a lot of different ideas that, and opinions that we attribute to Columbus are just not true. So he used different people's writings and their voyages and, and other evidence that there was this land here. Um, and even though he thought he was going to be going to Asia, still he landed here and based on some good information. Uh, so the Spanish, when they came here, they saw that the Native Americans had a lot of gold and the Spanish and other European nations, they used gold as money, so they wanted it. And again, it's like a conflict of opinions and ways of life. The Inca, Aztec, they use gold more decoratively, and the Europeans use gold as money. So there's going to be a big, a big uh, conflict there. Um, Cortez, he was a Spanish conquistador, and that's somebody, a Spanish conqueror. He defeated the, and conquered the Aztec Empire, and Pizarro defeated and conquered the Inca Empire. And the reason for these conquests is just a, a, lot, a couple different reasons. First of all, technology. The Spanish had better weapons and easily defeated the Aztec and the Inca. <clears throat> the Spanish had muskets, which are guns, a kind of gun, metal swords and spears, cannons, horses, metal armor. They had all of this equipment that was durable, tough, and where the Aztec had leather armor. Bullets go through that. Wooden shields, hey, bullets go through that too, and swords hack through it bows and arrows, which were not strong enough to penetrate Spanish armor. They had wooden clubs, spears with stone tips. I mean, in the end, the Aztec didn't stand a chance. And uh, we'll get into it later, but they didn't stand a chance because they were already weakened by uh, other uh, travelers that came with the Spanish. So we'll talk about that in a moment. Here's an image of... Uh, the Spanish under Cortes defeating Montezuma and the Aztec. Notice the difference in their just their outfits. On the left you see the Spanish, they have heavy duty armor, metal equipment. On the right they have um, they, they are wearing nothing basically on their chests. That's kind of a vital area. And they have wooden spears, wooden, wooden clubs, clubs with uh, obsidian spikes in them that just break when they hit metal. So, um, really not a fair fight between the Spanish and the Aztec. Uh, here's another image where the Spanish are attacking the capital city of the Aztec, Tenochtitlan. The Spanish attacked it with help from other groups of Native Americans who hated the Aztec because they were used as slaves and human sacrifices. You can see those people right here. 
they look that they use the same equipment as the Aztec do. See this bat here with this with the little lines? That's obsidian. It's like glass sharp pieces of rock, volcanic rock. <clears throat> they would impregnate that into their spears, into their clubs, into um, whatever they had. It's so sharp. And then in the back you have the Spanish kind of riding in support of these natives. Again, the tribes around and the other different groups around the Aztec had been sick of and sick of being used for slaves and sacrifices. So they rose up against their Aztec oppressors. All right, now here's the other um, the other thing that came with the Spanish in its disease. And more so than warfare, more so than starvation or anything, disease killed the most Native Americans. Um, we see here in this image, in 100 years, over 100 years, the Spanish killed estim in an, an estimation an, an, whoa, an estimated number of about 25 million Native Americans. That's just astounding. So then, as so many Aztec and Native Americans were dying, um, there were all kinds of different traditions that were made in different images that were drawn. Here you see people on the bottom left, Aztec, that are going up to heaven. And look, they have these dots all over them. That's smallpox. So diseases such as smallpox, measles, and flu killed millions and millions of Native Americans, but they didn't really harm the Spanish that much because the Spanish had had centuries of different kinds of immunities that they had built up at, uh, after going through the plagues of medieval Europe. Uh, they they had became strong enough to withstand the different diseases like smallpox. Um, so as the Spanish arrived and took over and killed the natives, they did a bunch of different things to them, real nasty things. First of all, they took their land and they turned their land into great plantations to uh, use natural resources and take them back to Europe. They stole their gold and silver and sent it back to Europe. They killed millions of Native Americans through warfare and disease, and they made them slaves and forced them to work for the Spanish. And there are many, many documents that talk about how awful these Native Americans were treated and how people back in Spain even were like, well, we have to stop this. We're destroying this population of people. And uh, it's really heartbreaking. And there was a, a very large argument between the, the church or within the church. Do, should the Spanish convert these Native Americans to Roman Catholicism and then they're abused and tortured and you know, or, or do they convert them and leave them alone? And do they try to make their lives better, Europeanize them, or make them be like the Spanish or other Europeans? It's just a very complicated subject where we're going to try to delve into that during this unit and see just how the Europeans really affected these Native Americans. Uh, as far as the Iroquois go, the Iroquois and the Native Americans, or well, the Iroquois and Europeans, the Iroquois ran into the British on the southern and eastern borders and the French on their northern and western borders. And the Iroquois were strong enough and the British and French were weak enough and sent small enough numbers of people that they held off, they held off the European um, spread for a while, for about a, a couple hundred years. And the British and the French really tried to trade with the natives and leave them in place rather than wipe them out like the Spanish did. So uh, Europeans in North America gave all kinds of different um, resources, technologies, goods in trade for Native American goods. So there's this whole list here. We have metal items like pots, knives, pans, and hatchets, guns, fabric, and blankets, because remember, the Native American, the Iroquois could not make fabric, textiles. They used uh, animal skins. Uh, they Europeans introduced alcohol to Native Americans. There was no alcohol before before Native or before Europeans arrived, which is kind of surprising, I think, but it's true. Um, they introduced diseases like smallpox, flu, and measles. 
little trinkets like glass beads and mirrors and angled roofs, which made snow fall off of their longhouses better, and different kinds of foods, pigs, cows, chickens, horses, sheep, and goats. So think about a your life, or even as an Iroquois, you have never seen any of these things from list one through eight. You've never seen them. Yet, the Iroquois were still a highly successful group of Native Americans. They, uh, you know, enjoyed themselves. They were successful. They were, they survived. And, uh, but then add in the European uh, influence. And, you know, now you're going to see that, or we're going to learn that the culture of these Native American groups changed dramatically. We're going to work on a CRQ that deals with this picture. Um, there were six major changes or major impacts from Europeans on the Iroquois and other Native Americans. First, letter A, ethnocentrism, means that each group thought they were better than the other. So they looked down on each other. They never really worked in a co as a cohesive group. Letter B, warfare. There was all kinds of warfare between Native Americans and Europeans. Um, raids and battles and wars and it was all fought over mainly fought over control of land letter c trading between the native americans and europeans <clears throat> and trading caused letter d well almost kind of letter d um trading caused the native americans to overhunt the beaver of this area to overhunt deer and changed native american way of life Letter D, you see new weapons were introduced to the Iroquois by the Europeans, and that caused Native Americans to lose the knowledge of how to make traditional weapons and tools. And on the, as a side note, I know a missionary who, he goes to uh, an Iroquois reservation now up in Canada, and he teaches the Iroquois young boys how to make bows and arrows. He's just this white guy who teaches these Native Americans how to make their own tools and weapons and that's really that's really heartbreaking so let's go forward letter E Europeans brought smallpox and other diseases and it wiped out millions of Indians of Native Americans and then letter F uh, Europeans introduced this idea of land deeds where land is owned by one person and you can't trade it, you, or you can, you can trade it and sell it, but you can't let anybody else use it. Nobody else is allowed on it. And Native Americans had no idea what that meant. And so they, sure, they would sign these deeds, and then, oh, suddenly they can't go on the land that they've hunted on for generations. So again, a very large problem that Europeans brought on to Native Americans. Here are some pictures of what smallpox looks like pretty nasty and we have some more pictures here of uh, in a trading uh, trading post Native Americans trading with uh, Europeans trading skins and whatever they have in their environment for what the Europeans have be it guns tools metal tools metal pots and pans And notice already by the early, well, the, the early 1700s and onward, we have Native American images where, look, you can tell this is after the contact with Europeans because this, this Native American has a, has a gun and has metal objects around his neck and in his ear. So um, be able to identify if an image of a Native American is pre-Columbus or post-Columbus, pre-European contact or after European contact. And finally, just some more images of the effects of European contact, the trade of technology, the trade of fighting, um, and the change of culture. It's just life became different for the Iroquois, and for most of them, it ended. So be sure to, uh, be sure to, understand that.